Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here. Now, over the past week or so, I have had a few people, actually quite a few people, that have said, hey, I noticed that you're running Ubuntu 16.04. What do you think of it? How's it working out for you? All that kind of stuff. And uh, and actually yesterday, after yesterday's videos, I got like another four messages asking the same exact thing. So I figured, hey, let's do a little video on it. Uh, talk about what's good, what's bad, all that kind of stuff. Now, I've been using uh, Ubuntu 16.04 a little over a month now. Uh, and actually, I've played with every one of the 16.04 series, uh, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, uh, Ubuntu GNOME, Ubuntu uh, Mate, uh, you know, all of them. And, uh, you know, GNOME Shell continues to be my favorite desktop environment, but I've got to say it still has its own issues. Probably the biggest one being that... Um, uh, you know, you've got all the GNOME extensions. When an update comes down the pike for GNOME Shell, a lot of times it takes a while for the GNOME extensions uh, to get updated so that they play nice with, with the GNOME Shell updates. So every time there's a GNOME update, you're wondering, oh, geez, are, am I going to lose my uh, all my extensions? Are they going to crash? You know, what's going to happen? Um, and, you know, not that that has deterred me from using GNOME, um, but, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that it's it's one of those, uh, I guess you'd consider a minor inconvenience or major inconvenience depending on, uh, on how dependent you are on those extensions. So, you know, there was that that got me uh, thinking, well, let's give, give Unity a try. Uh, and then also, you know, there's a lot of talk out on the internet about how terrible the Unity interface is, you, you know, you can't get anything done, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I've used Unity in the past, and, and when I first got started with Ubuntu, it was right about the time that, that the Unity interface was, was getting rolling. Um, so I've got, you know, I've, I've played around with it in the past, I've used it in the past, um, and really, it comes down, as far as productivity, it comes down to just knowing how to best utilize it. Uh, if you're going to try to use it as a traditional desktop environment, then, yeah, your productivity is going to suffer because it is not a traditional desktop. So having said all of that, there are things that I like about the Unity desktop, things I don't like about it. Um, number one thing I do not like about the Unity desktop is the uh, the launcher, the dock, whatever you want to call it. Now I've got it hidden, and uh, you can see I, I can pull it up by going over to the side there. Um, and normally, um, I, my my desktop setup I've, I'm running dual monitors. Normally I put it on my other monitor, get it all out of the way, but I moved it over to uh, to this main monitor. Uh, just for doing this video. But you can see I've got it for IntelliHide and normally I don't ever pull it up. Um, but I mean you can see that it's right there. Um, while I'm on the subject let me pull up. If you are using the Unity desktop I highly recommend you add the, Uni uh, the Unity tweak tool. It allows you to make all these little tweaks and changes and whatnot. It gives you an easy way to change themes and just all kinds of stuff with the with the Unity uh, desktop. So I've I've gone and sent my uh, set my launcher behavior to auto hide and then you can play around with the uh, the auto hide animations and whatnot. Um, and you know, a lot of people made out a big deal about uh, being able to move the uh, the Unity launcher to the bottom as opposed to the uh, the left hand of the screen. Um, you know, I guess if you're the kind of person that that you actually uses the launcher, that would be a big deal. Me, like I said, I don't use it. I do a keyboard search for everything uh, for, as far as pulling up my apps. So. You know uh, where it where that launcher is. You know personally, I would like to see a uh, you know an option just to completely remove that thing, but uh, that's probably not going to happen. Um, and you know once again, one of the things about Linux is being able to customize it the way you want to. So you know having the option to move it down to the bottom, hey, that's cool if that's where you want it. Uh, personally, I can't see why you'd want it there because it's uh, you're killing your, your screen real estate. 
Um, you know, uh, but like I said, that's just me. I don't use use the uh, the launcher, so hey, whatever works for you. So anyway, that's one of those things. Yeah, I really could care less about. Um, uh, the things I do really like about Unity is one is the the, the dash so that you know you hit that window key and just type whatever it is that you're looking for you know so say we're looking for LibreOffice Writer you can start typing LibreOffice it pulls up all the LibreOffice options I can even type in Writer and then it'll specifically pull up LibreOffice Writer so I can go and launch applications without ever having to uh, um, you know grab the mouse and you know just keep my hands on the keyboard so you know that's cool and then the other thing that I really like about the unity desktop is the uh, the heads-up display and if you're not familiar with that by hitting the alt key you bring up the heads-up display and then you can put in commands and it'll find those commands for you for whatever application you're working with so in the case we're in LibreOffice Writer right now let's see if I want to open a document I can just type in open hit enter boom and it pulls up you know your your documents and once again you know you uh, you can you don't have to take your hands off the keyboard and I'm very a very keyboard centric kind of person so uh, you know that kind of thing appeals to me so really like those features of it um, and you know there there is the um, you know kind of getting back to the uh, to the launcher you know if you've got an application that's open let me drag unity tweak tool back over here you know if there is a application that you have open you want to minimize it you don't know you, you can rather than use the minimize over here you can minimize via the launcher you can set it up for for one click minimize so just click there and it'll minimize boom uh, you know once again if you're if you're using the launcher uh, you know probably a cool feature um, if you're a keyboard centric kind of person like me yeah, it's probably not a big deal um, Okay, so there's. Let me take a look at my notes. See where I'm at here. So let's talk a little bit about software, and uh, let me drag over here. Uh, you know, with this release, Ubuntu switched to the GNOME Software Center uh, as opposed to the old uh, Ubuntu Software Center, which I think was a major improvement. The Ubuntu Software Center was glitchy. Uh, you know, if uh, there were times that you would you would uh, try to download multiple things and it would crash and, uh, and, and it seemed like it was just like an, an unmaintained project you know it was cool and awesome when it first came out but uh, it was like nobody ever put any time into it after uh, you know after it was first introduced so I think the GNOME Software Center big improvement uh, for myself I am I am more of a synaptic package manager or command line kind of person so you know the change wasn't a big deal for me because I'm not really using it all that much but uh, you know just the little bit that I have played with it it, it seems like a big improvement um, I couldn't get it to crash like uh, like uh, uh, Ubuntu Software Center would now there were there were issues when 1604 was first released um, where it would not install uh, Debian files if you downloaded a Debian file and tried to uh, to install a package it it, it, it wouldn't work um, that has since been fixed now and once again it wasn't a big deal for me because either a I am installing from the command line uh, so it wasn't a big deal or uh, I, I've also installed uh, GDebbie uh, which is a really nice tool for uh, if you're going to install uh, Debian files. Now, while we're on the subject of software, um, you know some of the software choices that uh, that Ubuntu has made, I'm kind of eh, I'm I'm not particularly happy with, uh, and I've pulled down some replacements. 
one is G edit, and that one's and it's not necessary. That's not necessarily um, uh, Ubuntu's fault. Well, I mean, it's their fault for keeping it around. I'm just not particularly happy with the development direction that uh, that uh, G edit has gone. Um, recently, um, for like just general text editing, I've been using uh, Genie, which I know it kind of borders on a uh, on an IDE, but I do like. I, I think it functions better than uh, than Gedit does. And um, now, besides Genie, I also have installed. Let me pull it over here. Uh, Adobe Brackets. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it is a code editor really focused on web development. So um, you know, if if you do some web development, definitely give it give it a, a you know take a look at it. Uh, for general text editing, yeah, it's probably not your thing, but uh, it's real nice for, for, for web developers. Um, what others have I have I added to? And let me take a look at my notes here. Oh, VLC. Got to have VLC for uh, um, for video player. Um, you know, GNOME videos, yeah, it's kind of, it's all right, kind of, I guess, but um, I much prefer VLC, multi-platform, uh, pretty much will play anything you throw at it. Uh, you can pretty much be sure that if you try to open a, a video file and VLC can't do it, then it's probably a corrupted file. One downer when it came to software was uh, Caffeine and Caffeine Plus do not work on uh on the Ubuntu Unity desktop, or at least I could not get them to work. If you're not familiar with Caffeine or Caffeine Plus, you see this little coffee cup that I got up right here. Well, that's for Caffeine. I think actually, I think I got Caffeine Plus installed right now. It didn't matter because it didn't work. Uh, and essentially, the way it would work is you click on it, toggle screensaver. If it looks like there's steam coming out of the cup of coffee right there, then uh, the the screensaver was deactivated. So it would always stay live, which was something that's really cool. If um, you know, like when I'm doing my videos, I'm I'm just sitting here talking. Last thing I want is the screen to go to sleep on me while I'm sitting here. So it was a nice feature to have. Like I said, it doesn't work in uh, in in Unity. Now, if you there is kind of a workaround. If you go into your power management. You can see where it says suspend when inactive for. Just go and set don't suspend, and your screen is always on. The problem with that is, is I liked having just this little icon that I could toggle on and off on on the uh, on the top panel. Uh, really can't do that now. You got to you know, yeah, it's not a big deal, but it's a little more involved than you know. It's always on or it's always off. Uh, the, the little toggle was convenient. 1604 brought a lot of device compatibility that uh, that wasn't available in 1404. As an example, uh, about a year or so ago, I purchased a, uh, a Panasonic G6 DSLR. When I was running Ubuntu 1404, and it didn't matter whether it was Unity or, or you know XFC, you know any of the desktop environments, it didn't matter. But on the on the 1404 code base, uh, it uh, the computer could not read my SD cards. Uh, the uh, you know just as far as it was con concerned, there wasn't an SD card in the slot. Um, now I could go and run a data cable from my camera to the computer, and it could download pictures that way, no problem. But uh, just from the SD card, uh, didn't happen. 1604, completely different animal. Slide the SD card in there, boom, reads it right away. So, um, and I'm, I'm guessing that's due to the kernel. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but I can say much better compatibility as far as that goes. Um, but on the downside, as far as, uh, uh, you know, code base behind the scenes kind of thing, I wasn't exactly thrilled about the fact that you can no longer use FGLRX. For those that are unfamiliar with that, that is also known as Catalyst, the proprietary uh, video drivers for uh, AMD cards. 
Now, I know that, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of you out there say, well, you know, the, AM, the new AMD GPU driver. Yes, I know there's new, the new AMD uh, uh, driver, and and it, it's really looking good for the upcoming, you know, uh, AMD cards and whatnot. However, for those of us that have older AMD cards, we're we're kind of left uh, with just using uh, uh, the Radeon driver, the open source driver. And while it is not bad, it it definitely is not the performer that uh, that FGL RX is. Now, I can't 100% fault uh, uh, Ubuntu for the decision they made. This is an LTS; they have to maintain it for five years, and since uh, AMD has stopped development of uh, of the uh, of the Catalyst driver. That means that Ubuntu would would have to uh, do the development on their own, or at least you know at least maintenance. And uh, you know they, my guess is they saw it as we've got enough on our plate. Um, I don't particularly fault them for the decision that they made, but at the same time. If you got an AMD card and it's not going to be supported by the new driver, you're you're kind of screwed. Um, myself, I'm keeping an eye on eBay for a gently used, very cheap uh, Nvidia card, so that uh, you know, and swap that out, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, in the future I can avoid all the AMD issues. Performance-wise, I've been pretty happy. Um, you know, I haven't had any crashes, glitches, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, most of the most of the problems that I've been reading about online that various people have had, I've either not experienced it or because of my workflow uh, or the you know just the way that I do things, it, it, it's a non-issue. You know, I I read about some people having problems with uh, when they upgraded from 1404 to 1604 or maybe 1510 to 1604 that there are issues with the upgrade tool whenever i do an upgrade i do a fresh install um and uh you know yeah it's a little more work involved but at the same time it's i, I kind of use it as the opportunity to clean house um, a little bits of code here and there, uh, old files, whatnot. You, you know, hey, it, it's a good good time to clean house, and uh, and who knows, maybe that's the cause of uh, of some of the issues. I don't know, but uh, but anyway, I always do a a a, a fresh install. So uh, you know, the upgrading issue, uh, even if it's there, um, it's not going to affect me. So. You know, most of, the, like I said, most of the, the, the glitches that I've heard about online, I haven't experienced it. So performance-wise, uh, you know, I couldn't be happier. Uh, as far as how much longer am I going to continue running um, uh, regular Ubuntu, uh, I don't know. Probably not much longer, not because I'm not happy with it, but because I am very much of a distro hopper and, uh, uh, you know, uh, a month and actually it's closer to about a month and a half but uh, um, you know this far into using this desktop uh, yeah I'm already getting the itch to, to try something new for a while now on my laptop I'm running uh, a peppermint 6 OS and uh, really happy with that um, I don't think I'm going to change my main desktop to, to peppermint um, not because there's anything wrong with it just because you know I'm already doing that on the laptop let's do something different here but uh, uh, you know that's just me. Uh, like I said, there's not a perf any performance issues that I'm that I'm seeing that I'm not happy with or anything like that. You know, it's just uh, I'm ready for a change. And uh, so I guess having said all that, that about finishes this video up. If you've got any comments, questions, all that kind of stuff, please leave it down below. I try to get to it as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.